guys, in today's video, I'm going to show you how to make a cute moth cake topper. Now, this one is a video from one of my Facebook lives the other week. So you can still find the full length video of me making it in real time over on my Facebook page, which is just called So It's Fancy Cakes. So I'm going to be making this little moth out of Saracino modeling paste. The original one I did was like a pale yellow. I made this using the Squires Kitchen um, Pastels food color range to get it to that color. It has got a polystyrene ball in the middle just to lighten the weight. Now you don't have to put the polystyrene in the middle. It does mean that no one's going to be able to eat this because of that. You could also replace it with like Rice Krispies, uh, Rice Krispie treats if you wanted instead. So I'm just going to cover the ball in a thin layer of modeling paste first. You can use fondant if you want, guys, if you prefer, but for me, I found that modeling paste works a little bit better. It's a little bit firmer. If you are using fondant or ready to roll icing, you will need to add in some CMC or Tylos to it just to help firm it up a little bit. So once the ball is covered, don't worry if you get a bit of a line because we're going to be adding over the top of this. I'm going to roll another ball a little bit smaller. Now, apologies, guys. I know I haven't told you all the weights in here, but if you pop to the Facebook version, all the weights are on there of everything that I use. So it's now kind of more of a teardrop shape, this little bit, and we're just pushing it onto that ball. And I'm going to put a little line around here. I think it makes it look a bit more bug-like by having that little ridge in there. And another one. And I'm going to texture it because moths are usually quite kind of furry or fluffy, and this one's not really based on a real one. So it's just a Kempering tool that I'm using here to try and texture it. Or you can use like a Dresden tool. I'll put links below the video, guys, to everything that I have used. I do sell most of the products on, on my website. So obviously you don't have to buy them from my website. It will just show you what tool I'm using. or give you the name of it if you follow the links as well. Okay, so we're going to have a little ball for the face. And I'm going to press in at either side for the eye sockets. Apologies, my head was in shot for, I think, most of the Facebook Live in this one. Uh, you can use your fingers or a balling tool. This is just the FMM one that I'm using. Actually, if you've got a metal balling tool that's a little bit larger, it might be easier. I do have one, but I just couldn't find it when I was making this. Just give it a little smile. Just pressing in a little bit with the sort of more rounded end of my Dresden tool. Well, this tool is also known as a flower and leaf fainer as well. I kind of refer to it as a Dresden tool. I think it's called that as well. So I'm just going to again give the head a bit of texture. Just be careful you don't squash the face and the head when you're doing this. You might find if the Kemper tool um, is a little bit big and bulky for this, swap to the Dresden to put the little lines on the head. You can just about still see where the smile is. Then we're going to fill the eye sockets with some white paste. So this is just modeling paste I'm using again. I've rolled it to a slight teardrop shape for my eye. And it does bulge out a little bit. So it looks more kind of bug insect like if it's got quite big bulgy eyes and sometimes they can look quite cute if they're big okay so we've got some black modeling paste rolled out nice and thin and i'm just going to cut two circles i'm just using my pme plunger cutters for this i think it's the largest size of the three that come in a pack that i used for this one and then we're going to put a tiny dot of white paste in there as well now if you want you can use like the white edible pens to draw the dots in so I've, you can see one on my board, it's a fractal white edible pen. Uh, but because the dots are fairly large-ish, I'm going to just try and stick them on instead. Let's give it a bit of pink around its cheeks. Although I put quite a bit more pink on in a bit anyway, a bit later on when we sort of finish off decorating it. And it's little antennas, if I'm calling them the right thing, guys. Uh, you can use like different cutters veiners for. So I made some earlier with some fern cutters. And I let them set. I just stuck them on some florist wires. But this one is different leaf cutters. And these as well would make great little antennas. Have a bit of a play around with what kind of size and shape you like. I quite like these little ones. I'll try and put a link below for the mold as well that I use. Just in case you like that one. So your wire doesn't want to be too thick. I want to say I used maybe about 26 gauge wire for this one. If you don't have a mold you want to do it by hand. You're just going to sort of flatten a teardrop shape so it looks a bit like a leaf and we'll put some lines on it. It could be like a leaf or a feather at this stage I guess. Don't press it too thin otherwise you won't get the wire in the middle though. You can turn it up a little bit at the edges. Just wet the end of your wire a little bit so that it sticks in place and we're going to insert it into there. And you're just going to do exactly the same for another one as well. 
I don't know which ones at this stage, or I didn't know which ones I was going to use at that stage. So I'm going to roll out some modeling paste and I'm just going to cut out some wings. Now I've got these rose petal cutters here. These are the FMM ones. I'll put links below. They're the larger set three. Um, it doesn't give me the exact shape, but it gives me a starting point and then I can kind of cut them down a little bit. So I've cut a circle and then we're cutting a little bit off each edge. And we're going to need four wings. So we'll do another two. There's a bit missing out the side there, but it's fine. And I'm also going to change the shape of these slightly. So I'm cutting like a little bit off each kind of side. So it becomes a little bit more triangular-ish. And for the other side, you can just use your first one as a template and cut out the same shape on the one for the other side. Decorating them, I'm using my edible pens. So this is a fractal edible pen. Again, I'll put links below the video so you guys can uh, find them on my website. And you can play around with the patterning. You can draw whatever kind of patterns you want on these wings. I wanted to put all sorts of different colors and things on, but I didn't want it to look too much like a butterfly. Although I'm not convinced mine looks entirely like a moth either. Um, but you know, it's very cartoony, it's fine. I'm gonna add some powder colors as well for a bit more sort of color and shading on these wings. And I can add in a bit of purple. Uh, the powder dusts that I'm using, they are edible ones. I know it looks like a makeup palette. It's, it's not, it is an edible food thing. I called a petal palette. Again, I'll put links below the video to those for you guys. They are great for small little bits like this. I probably wouldn't use them for kind of covering a whole cake in powder, but they are great for things like this and like dusting flower petals. To attach the head, I'm just popping a cocktail stick into the body. You don't have to do this, but if you are a bit low on time like I was, it's just going to help hold it in place rather than you having to wait for the head to set on in that position. Then we're going to take a big piece. So taking a big piece, it's going to wrap around the middle section. So kind of flattened it and it's a little bit thinner at each end. This is going to give us like the very bulky bit of the moth. And then we're going to put some lines on there. So the longer the lines, the, I guess the longer the hair looks like it is on the moth. And then we're just going to add a bit of colour again, so a bit of shading with the pink. I'm just using the Sylvia Mancini brushes on this one guys, but you know any fluffy brush you've got is fine. And we're going to darken between those lines that we put on earlier as well. Let's just make some little legs. So again, kind of little teardrop shapes and we're just going to stick them on at each side of the body. Now. I'm not going to put the six legs on that it's actually got because the wings are going to hide a lot of them, I think. So let's just put four on that I think might peek out at the front. And then what I'm going to do to attach the wings is I'm just going to press in either side of the body here, giving us a little flat section that they fit on. And also then that furry bit will just kind of come up and over the wings a tiny bit. You can use water or edible glue to stick them down. Either will work fine. So my wings are still quite floppy. If you want to give them a little bit longer to firm up before you stick them on, you can do. And then let's stick its little antennas in. Ooh. Now, ideally let the little antennas dry before you add them. And you can add some colored dust to them as well if you want. If you want more detail in the eyes, you can also add some color by adding an iris. And I'm just using my edible pens to draw that on around sort of the black pupil that we've got on there. You can, if you want, give it some little eyelashes. Just roll thin a piece of black against just modeling paste. Keep it nice and pointy at each end and just put it around the top of the eye and then you can flick it out of that outer edge. I would do the same on the other one. I think I liked it better without actually, but you know, it's up to you guys. This is the one I did before. They do look a little bit different. I gave the other one bigger arms. Thanks for watching this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. If you do want to see the full length version, do go over to my Facebook page, Zoe's Fancy Cakes, and you can find it on there. I'll also be doing a Facebook Live next Monday as well at 10 a.m. over on my Facebook page. That's 10 a.m. UK time. So if you want to join us, feel free to join us there. Thanks for watching. If you like the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and leave me a comment below. You can see more of my tutorials by clicking on the images on screen now. If you haven't already, make sure you click the subscribe button to stay up to date with my future tutorials. There are also links in the description box below where you can find me on Facebook, Instagram and more.